film begins with a guy named Alex, who had been in jail for something that happened a decade ago. Back then, Alex took the blame to protect his friends from the Black Dragon Gang when the police came after them. Now, after all these years, Alex is finally free. He's really happy to leave the prison. As he steps outside, he takes a deep breath and enjoys the cool, fresh air. Alex decides he wants to forget about his troubled past and do things right from now on. Meanwhile, there's a guy named Dalum, who is now the leader of the Black Dragon Gang. He's the son of the old leader. Fatir, who is still in the gang, is like Daylon's right-hand man. During that time, Fatir helps Daylon sell drugs in their neighborhood. One day, they were talking about their drug business, and Daylon mentioned that he might make peace with another gang called the Red Axe. Daylon also instructed his friend Oriel to take control of areas where no gangs are currently in charge. The next day, Alex was waiting for a bus when he saw a newspaper. The news said his old boss from the Black Dragon Gang had passed away. This made Alex think about the old times with his buddies. As he was thinking, he saw some guys doing a drug deal nearby. Suddenly, one of them pulled out a knife and stabbed another guy. At that moment, Alex didn't want any trouble, so he didn't get involved. While on the bus, all Alex could think about was finding his ex-girlfriend, Aryati. He looked everywhere in the village for her, but couldn't find her. He only found her empty house. A neighbor told him Aryati had to leave because her dad kicked her out. Alex was really worried and left to find her with some friends. Soon after, Alex went to a bar he used to go to and asked a barmaid about Aryati. But the barmaid was rude about Aryati, which made Alex super mad. Just as Alex was about to lose it, his friend named Nadia showed up. She was shocked to see Alex out of jail. When she asked why he was causing trouble, he told her he was looking for Aryati. However, Nadia didn't know where Aryati was but suggested asking Fotir. After hearing from Nadia, Alex went to see Fotir. On his way, a guy with a mask was following him, which Alex noticed. Out of the blue, another guy named Tauba and his crew show up. Tauba tells Alex that he's from Fotir's gang and that he's there to take Alex to see Fotir. But first, Tauba wants to fight Alex to see how tough he really is. However, Alex didn't want to fight. He's trying to be a better person now. But Tauba attacked him, so Alex had to defend himself. Even though Alex is really good at fighting, he pretended to lose just to end the fight. Tauba thought Alex wasn't that strong and took him to Futir's place. At the same time, a masked guy was still sneaking around, watching Alex. Then, when they got to Fotir's place, Alex noticed Fotir couldn't speak. He used hand signs to talk. Fotir told Alex that the Black Dragon Gang was doing really well now with Daylon as the boss. He wanted Alex to join again. But Alex said no, he didn't want to be in a gang anymore. Fotir was cool about it. They were old friends. He even gave Alex a card so he could stay at his friend's place named Tika for free just by mentioning Fotir's name. Soon after, Alex went to Tika's house and mentioned Fotir's name. Because of that, Tika let him stay without charging him. Tired, Alex quickly went to bed. The next morning, Alex heard Tika crying from her room, but he decided not to get involved. He went to the market to earn some honest money. He got a job there carrying stuff. When he tried to buy food, some bullies at the market started giving him a hard time. They cornered Alex, but he ended up fighting and easily beat them. Meanwhile, Daylon wanted Alex back in the Black Dragon Gang. He told Futir to get Alex to join again no matter what. Daylon knew how tough and experienced Alex was and really wanted him on his team. On the other hand, when Alex got back to Tika's house, he saw two women who looked kinda shady. They were a mom and daughter. The daughter looked super scared. Tika told Alex they were her nieces from her hometown. Alex wasn't sure what to think, so he just went to his room. But then he heard the girl scream. When he came out, Tika's son said it was a ghost making that noise. Tika quickly told her son and Alex to go back to their rooms. Meanwhile, that creepy guy who was following Alex turns out killed one of the Black Dragon gang members. The next day, when Tauba found out his guy was dead, he got super mad and blamed another gang, the Red Axe. 
Taoba started thinking that the Black Dragon Gang was in big trouble. He felt they really needed someone tough like Alex on their side. In the morning, Fatir and Taoba bumped into Alex at the market. They tried to get Alex to join their gang again, but Alex don't want to because he was just looking for Aryadi. On his way home, Alex ran into the mom and daughter from Tika's house. The girl suddenly passed out, bleeding. Turns out she just had an abortion. Alex was shocked and went to confront Tika. When he got to Tika's room, he found out she was doing the abortions. Alex was angry and asked her if she'd seen Aryadi. Tika was scared and finally said that years ago, Fotir brought Aryati to her place, but she ran away. After hearing this, Alex stormed into Fotir's place, beating up everyone including Tauba. He was furious with Fotir, reminding him of the time he went to jail to save the Black Dragon Gang. He even asked Fotir to take care of Aryati. But instead, Fotir got Aryati pregnant and then told her to get an abortion. Not long after that, Ariel and his group approached Alex, trying to harm him. However, Fotir, who was in charge, intervened and allowed Alex to leave without harm. While Alex was on his way, a stranger unexpectedly handed him an address. This address turned out to be where Aryadi was living. The following day, Alex turned into a detective, using the address to locate Aryati's home. When he found her, he was extremely surprised to discover that she had a child. Despite having ignored Aryati for 10 years, Alex just walked into her house, which startled Aryati, and she promptly asked him to leave. Aryati was heartbroken and told him to go away. At the same time, Alex was suspicious, thinking Aryati might have a relationship with Fotir and that the child might be Fotir's. In another unexpected development, Tika got arrested by the police because of Alex, and she reached out to Fotir, hoping he would help her out. One night, Alex went to Aryati's house to apologize. He told her that he had changed and wasn't the same person who had disappeared from her life 10 years ago. He was curious why she was so angry with him, and Aryati explained it was because he had been gone for a whole decade. Then, Alex shocked her by revealing that he had been in jail all that time, not traveling the world as she had thought. Aryati's daughter, Kayla, joined them with a friendly attitude and invited Alex to have dinner with them. During the meal, Alex couldn't resist his curiosity and asked Aryati about who Kayla's father was. Aryati didn't reveal it but mentioned that she was moving to a new city in five days. She challenged Alex to prove he had truly changed, saying he could follow her if he succeeded. Alex agreed and even offered to take Kayla to school the next day. Little did they know, someone suspicious was secretly watching them from a distance. Meanwhile, Fotir was driving his car when he encountered an unexpected obstacle. He got out to clear it, but to his surprise, the same mysterious person from earlier appeared and, in a shocking turn of events, took out Fotir for good. On the other hand, as Alex was heading out, Aryadi told him to prove that he's changed if he want to tag along with her and her daughter. Hearing that, Alex agree and will show her that, but then he hit a snag. And at that time, he was thinking about the place he could crash the night. Sadly, Tika's place was a no-go because the cops had taped it off cause she was involved in some illegal stuff. And just when things looked bleak, Alex spotted an abandoned building. It wasn't five-star, but it'd do for a night especially since he promised to drop off Kayla at school in the morning. Now, let's switch the scene to a bar. This bar was the hangout spot for the Red Axe Gang. Norman and Rishol, who were important members of the Red Axe Gang, were relaxing there with their group. But here's the surprise. Tauba and his crew showed up, not realizing they were in enemy territory. After a while, Tauba noticed a dancer and wanted her to join him. However, she declined because it was closing time. Taubo's friends didn't take this well, and that's when Norman and Riesel stepped in to resolve the situation. Tempers flared, and Taubo wasn't happy about it. The situation got really tense, and it seemed like a fight might break out. But since Taubo was outnumbered, he decided to leave instead. As they were walking out, Norman made a disrespectful comment about Fatir. This really angered Taubo, and he was ready to fight. Luckily, his friends were there to stop him before things escalated. The next day, 
Alex overslept, even though he was supposed to take Kayla to school. On his way, he noticed the police were carrying away a body from a crime scene. What he didn't know was that the body was Fatir's. He kept walking and finally reached Aryati's place, feeling good about not being too late. However, as they walked to school, Aryati was a bit frustrated. Alex was walking super fast and Kayla was struggling to keep up. Meanwhile, at a bar owned by the Black Dragon Gang, Taubo was seething. He was mad because he thought the Red Axe Gang was behind Fotir's death. He believed this because Norman and his crew had once threatened Fotir. Taubo wanted to organize a grand and elaborate funeral for Fotir, but Aureal disagreed with the idea. Aureal thought it would make the Red Axe Gang feel even more confident. Taubo didn't like this at all, and they started arguing. Just when things were about to get really intense, one of Taubo's friends intervened. He mentioned that Daylon preferred a simple funeral for Fotir. Taubo eventually agreed and shared that Fotir had once mentioned that if anything happened to him, he wanted to be cremated. After the Black Dragon Gang said their final farewells to Fotir by cremating him, Daylon started thinking about the whole situation surrounding Fotir's death. He told his crew to be cautious and avoid getting into trouble. The surprising twist was that Daylon picked Tauba to fill Fotir's shoes. This was a significant decision because Fotir's territory was a hot spot for problems. Daylon knew how much everyone looked up to Fotir and that his death was a big loss for their gang. He also mentioned they could use someone like Alex to help things run more smoothly. Once Tauba left, Daylon called Aureal. He wanted Aureal to secretly keep an eye on Tauba. Daylon was a bit unsure about Taubo's leadership because Taubo had a quick temper and sometimes made unwise decisions on his own. Meanwhile, Alex was waiting at the school for Kayla. But waiting isn't very exciting, so he decided to go to the market to pick up his paycheck. When he returned to the school, Taubo and his friends arrived. Taubo tried to convince Alex to rejoin the Black Dragon gang, but Alex, being the principled person he is, firmly said no and told them to leave. However, Taubo didn't take this rejection well and got angry, so he confronted Alex. But Alex was skilled at defending himself against them. Things took a bad turn when Kayla arrived and called out to Alex. This distracted him, and he got knocked down. With Alex down, Taubo and his friends took the opportunity to attack him. On another note, Ariel and his group were involved in some suspicious drug activities. While he was hanging out, a guy named Parjo approached him and mistakenly called him Bara, thinking he was connected to a person named Adel. Aureal corrected him, but Parjo was convinced that Aureal was Bara. As Parjo walked away, he mentioned something about Adel meeting a terrible fate. This upset Aureal, and he warned Parjo, causing him to become frightened. In another part of the story, Alex was trying to mend things with Aryati. He explained that the Black Dragon Gang had tried to recruit him again, but he refused to go back. Aryati was still upset, especially since Kayla had witnessed the whole argument. As Alex tried to explain himself, Kayla started to see that Alex genuinely cared about them. Now let's talk about Daylon. He had just finished a meeting and learned that Silas, the leader of the Red Axe Gang, had sent flowers for Fotir's funeral. This surprised Daylon because he wondered how Silas even found out about Fotir's low-key funeral. Daylon had a feeling something was suspicious. When he called Silas, Silas acted cool and claimed to have sources everywhere. He suggested they meet at a neutral place to discuss and clear up any doubts about Fotir's death. To make a long story short, Silas talked to Daylon and denied his gang's involvement in Fotir's death. Daylon believed him. Both of their gang territories were affected by Fotir's death, so at that time, Silas wanted to help keep Fotir's area safe. He proposed that the Black Dragon Gang would receive 30% of the earnings, but Daylon wanted a fair 50-50 split. Once they agreed, Daylon went away. Tauba was curious and asked Daylon why he let another gang called the Red Axe look after Fotir's place. Daylon said their gang was weak after Fotir's death. So, for now, he let the Red Axe gang take care of it. But he also told Tauba to keep a close eye on them and see what they do. 
Meanwhile, Norman suggested to Silas that they should just get rid of the Black Dragon gang. But Silas said no. He had a different plan and wanted Norman to wait and see. The day after their argument, Alex hoped that Kayla would come to meet him and say sorry. When they did meet, Kayla wanted to know how old Alex was. Turns out Alex is almost as old as her mom. Soon after, Kayla told Alex he should act his age and not get upset so easily. Elsewhere, Talbot just finished selling some drugs. But then he noticed Norman and Rishol with some guys, following the person he had just sold drugs to. Curious Talbot decided to follow them secretly. At that time, Norman, Rishol, and their crew chased those two drug buyers into a big empty building right up to the rooftop. They cornered these two guys, who happened to be customers from a rival gang, the Red Axe Gang. But here's the twist. Those two guys had just bought drugs from Tauba, who's from the Black Dragon Gang. This made Norman and Riesel really mad. The two drug buyers were super scared and begged for their lives. But Norman, super angry, hurt one guy badly with a screwdriver, while Riesel shot the other. Tauba, who was watching all this, got scared and accidentally made a noise. Thinking fast, Tauba grabbed a weapon, just in case. Suddenly, Ariel appeared, distracted the bad guys, and helped Tauba run away. While they were running, they talked about how the Red Axe gang might want to control Fotir's area. Ariel then shared a theory that maybe Alex had something to do with Fotir's death. Since Alex got out of jail, a lot of the Black Dragon gang members had been dying mysteriously. Worried and angry, Tauba started planning to confront Alex. Soon after, Alex went over to Ariati's house and saw her struggling with a stuck door. Being a good guy, he helped her open it. Kayla saw this and started liking Alex more. After helping with the door, Kayla asked Alex to hang out with her and her mom later that night. Little did they know, one of Taubo's guys was watching Alex from nearby. That evening, Taubo told Daylon that the Red Axe gang was slowly taking over their area. Daylon said to get more info before deciding what to do next. As for Alex, he was getting ready for his night out with Kayla and Aryati. But after he left his home, Taubo and his crew sneaked in to search Alex's house. While Alex was having a good time with Aryati and Kayla, Tauba and his guys searched every corner of Alex's house, but found nothing. Even though they left, Tauba had one guy stay behind to keep an eye on things. On the other hand, while eating together, Alex shared a story with Kayla about his old girlfriend. He talked about how close they were through the good times and bad. Kayla didn't realize that he was actually talking about her mom, Aryati. Aryati just smiled, a bit embarrassed by the story. Kayla was curious and asked Alex where his old girlfriend was now, hoping they'd get back together. Elsewhere, after finishing work, Parjo felt like someone was following him. As he tried to get into his car, a noise caught his attention. Then, a mysterious guy jumped into his car, and sadly, Parjo didn't make it. This same mysterious guy then rushed to Alex's place, probably with some plan in mind. Meanwhile, Taubla sent his crew to get Alex. Alex was worried about Aryati and Kayla's safety, so he met Taubu's crew to find out what they wanted. Taubu warned Alex that if they find out he had anything to do with Fotir's death, there'd be trouble. At that time, Taubu had a plan to hurt Aryati and Kayla as revenge. When Alex found out, he was so mad that he got into a fight with Taubu's crew. Aryati saw this and was upset with Alex. When Alex got home later, he was super shocked to find a dead body on his couch. Soon after, Tauba and his gang showed up at Alex's place, wanting to talk. Alex quickly hid the dead body. Tauba asked Alex where his missing guy was, but Alex played it cool and said he had no idea. Tauba was suspicious of Alex, so he and his crew looked all around Alex's house, but they couldn't find their missing friend. While they were searching, Alex noticed one of Taubo's gang had left his phone behind. Quickly, Alex threw the phone outside without anyone seeing. When Taubo tried calling that phone, everyone heard it ringing from outside. Soon after, Taubo and his gang went outside to find the phone. But Taubo suspected that Alex was hiding something. 
Taobao also pointed out that ever since Alex got out of jail, a lot of the Black Dragon gang members had been dying in strange ways. Just when things were heating up, some local people showed up and saw what was happening. Taoba didn't want any trouble with them, so he took off. After Taoba left, Alex had to get rid of the body or else he'd be blamed. He came up with a plan to move the body, secretly using a trash cart through a quiet alleyway so nobody would see. As Alex was moving the body, he remembered he promised Aryati he'd be a better person. But things just weren't going his way. On his way to dispose of the body, a guy stopped him, but only to throw away some trash. With a heavy heart, Alex reached a bridge and dropped the body underneath. Meanwhile, at the Red Axe Gang's place, Reeshole checked out some stuff that Norman was planning to sell. It looked like drugs. These drugs were meant for new places and new buyers. Reeshole had a message for Norman from Silas that Norman should be more involved in these new deals and not just send his crew. Reeshole felt the new drug dealers might not be trustworthy. Norman, however, didn't like being told what to do by Reeshole since they were equals in the gang. As Reeshole was leaving, one of Norman's guys named Bulldog told him everything would be okay with the drug deal. The next day, Aryadi was taking Kayla to school on a bus. There, they bumped into Alex, who seemed to be headed their way. Kayla hoped Alex might be there to drive her to school, but Aryadi wasn't in the mood to see Alex. She was still mad about him getting them mixed up with bad people. Elsewhere, Tauba caught up with Daylon to share some serious news. Tauba warned him that the Red Axe gang was super ruthless, even killing their own customers. Tauba felt lucky to be alive after a close call, thanks to Oriel's help. And Daylon's advice is Tauba should be even tougher on anyone trying to mess with their territory. On the other hand, Alex came to Aryati's house, knocked, and thought she might still be mad at him. Soon after, Aryati returned from dropping Kayla off at school. Aryati's door was stuck again because it was old and rusty. Alex stepped in to help and opened the door for her. Grateful, Aryati invited Alex to join her at Kayla's school event in a few days. In another place, two persons were searching for bottles under a bridge. They spotted a large bag floating in the water and hoped it might contain money. But to their surprise, it turned out to be a dead body. At the same time, Bulldog and his friend were meeting with a new person named Suab, who was a drug dealer. They gave Suab a sample of their product to test. Suab and his associate, Joki, appeared satisfied with the quality and were about to pay Bulldog. However, they suddenly turned against Bulldog, harming his friend. Bulldog managed to escape with the money and hid, hoping Suab wouldn't discover his location. But Suab was getting closer and closer to where he was hiding. Shortly after, Bulldog found himself rushing into a marketplace, trying to conceal himself. When he believed he was safe and left, he didn't realize that Suab was still secretly following him. Just as Suab was about to capture him, Alex arrived and protected Bulldog, causing Suab to flee in fear. Meanwhile, the two individuals who found the body in the bag reported it to the Black Dragon gang. Later on, Tauba and Ariel were trying to figure out who the dead person was. Tauba thought maybe the Red Axe gang was behind it, but Ariel, after looking at the injuries, guessed it might have been Alex. Tauba remembered how Alex fights and felt sure Alex was to blame. Ariel reminded Tauba it was just a guess, but Tauba, wanting revenge, got ready to confront and take down Alex. On the other hand, Bulldog was sneakily following Alex. Alex noticed and asked why is Bulldog following him. Hearing that, Bulldog replied that he just wanted to say thanks because Alex had saved his life. But Alex told him it wasn't a big deal and asked Bulldog to stop following him. Later, Alex went to Aryati's house and saw another guy, Yudo, talking to her. Turns out Yudo is Aryati's neighbor and he likes her. Alex felt a bit jealous and said something that made Yudo leave. But then, Alex realized that Bulldog was still tailing him to Aryati's place. Meanwhile, Daylon and Ariel had a chat about Tauba. Daylon wasn't sure if making Tauba, the new leader after Futir, was the right choice. Ariel said he was new to the Black Dragon gang, so he couldn't really judge Tauba, who had been there longer. 
But Daylone believed in picking the best person for the job, regardless of how long they'd been in the gang. At that time, Ariel thought Tauba just needed more time to adjust to his new role. Still, Daylone had doubts, so he gave Ariel a secret mission to keep an eye on the Red Axe gang in the area that used to belong to Fotir. On the other hand, Norman was really upset because Su Ab had caused the death of one of his crew. There, Riesel told Norman that he had warned Norman about this, but Norman was too angry to listen. After their chat, Bulldog told Riesel something interesting. The guy who had helped him, Alex, used to be with the Black Dragon gang. Riesel was thankful for this valuable tip. Then, Bulldog and Norman got ready to plan their revenge on Su Ab. Later on, Norman got a tip about where Suab was. Without wasting any time, he and his crew went there to confront Suab and his gang. Soon after, Suab bumped into one of Norman's guys and got the feeling he and his crew were in trouble. So, he quickly gave Zhu Qi a shout, telling him they needed to get out of their hideout pronto. But even before they could make their move, Norman and his crew showed up, brandishing all sorts of scary weapons. All this while, Ariel was sneakily watching everything from a hidden spot. Shortly after, Suab reached a factory, which was actually his secret base, but bad luck struck again cause Norman and his gang had beaten him there. They looked ready to take on Suab and his crew. Suab tried to rally his men to flee, but they were trapped since Norman's guys had them surrounded. And then, without a second thought, Norman's gang attacked and took out Suab and his men. At that time, Ariel, who saw all this unfold, was pretty shocked. He thought the Red Axe gang was super ruthless. Meanwhile, at school, Kayla bumped into Tauba, who claimed to be friends with Alex. Tauba seemed to have some suspicious intentions regarding Kayla, but luckily, Alex arrived just in time. He told Tauba to stay away from her and keep his distance. When Kayla got home, she shared her close encounter with the Black Dragon gang and their connection to Alex with her mom. Aryadi was pretty upset with Alex when she heard this. Sadly, Alex had to leave Aryati's place. On his way, he crossed paths with Bulldog, who mentioned that his boss, Silas, wanted to talk. Even though Alex wasn't interested, Silas tried to tempt him with double the pay to join their group. But Alex wasn't swayed and simply walked away. On the other hand, it turns out Aureal was secretly observing them. He called Tauba, and suggested that Alex might be working with the Red Axe gang. Tauba wasted no time and went straight to Aryati's house to look for Alex. When Tauba got there, Kayla mentioned someone had been creeping around their place. Soon after, Aryati stepped up and asked Tauba what he wanted. Tauba said he was looking for Alex, but Aryati told him off, making it clear her place wasn't Alex's hangout. She went back in and locked everything up. Soon after, one of Taubo's guys called, saying they found Alex. Once Taubo left, Aryati and Kayla decided to step out to grab a few things. But they had some bad luck. They ran into Norman, who, showing his gun, told them they had to come with him to meet someone at the Red Axe gang's base. Not having much choice, Aryati and Kayla went with him. Meanwhile, Alex was grabbing a bite on a street corner. Out of nowhere, Tauba and his crew tried to jump him. But Alex wasn't an easy target. Thanks to his fighting skills, he took them all down. Just then, Aureal stepped in and told Tauba he had the wrong idea about Alex. He wasn't sure if Alex had hurt any of their guys. Tauba was pretty mad and told his crew to scram. Alex then grabbed his stuff and go, giving Aureal a nod of thanks on his way out. A bit later, Aryati and Kayla found themselves at the Red Axe gang's main spot, but Silas, the guy they were supposed to meet, had already left. Riesel told Norman to take Kayla aside for a moment, because he had some private stuff to talk about with Aryati. He then tried to make a deal with Aryati, saying that if she could get Alex to team up with them, they'd give her and Kayla a fancy life. Hearing that, Aryati wasn't having it and just left. Meanwhile, Alex was lost in thought after Aryati had scolded him. Suddenly, Bulldog appeared and informed Alex that Aryati and Kayla were having dinner with Silas at the Red Axe place. This news made Alex really angry. 
He grabbed Bulldog and insisted that he take him to the gang's headquarters right away. When they arrived, Alex ran into Norman and quickly asked about Aryati. Norman told him she had already gone home. Alex made it clear that if the gang had any issues with him, they should leave Aryati and Kale out of it. Just then, Reeshol spoke up, saying they only wanted Alex to join their group. Alex rejected the idea immediately, as he was tired of the gang life. Norman then added that they didn't really care if Alex said no. However, he warned that if Alex decided to join the Black Dragon gang, they wouldn't hesitate to harm him, Aryati, and Kayla. On a different note, Tauba received a scolding from Daylon for his impulsive actions in going after Alex without thinking. Daylon tried to explain that just because Alex refused now didn't mean he would always refuse. He advised Tauba to be more like a real, who was smarter and didn't rush into things. At the Red Axe Gang's headquarters, Norman realized that Alex was a formidable person. He wondered aloud why they hadn't eliminated him already. Riesel chimed in, saying they were patiently waiting for the right time to take down the Black Dragon Gang and dealing with Alex would happen then. Norman didn't appreciate Riesel's attitude and decided to leave. Riesel didn't seem bothered and just smirked as Norman walked away. After all the commotion at the Red Axe place, Alex went to Aryati's house to check on how she and Kayla were doing. As he approached, he noticed a suspicious guy following Aryati. Without hesitation, Alex intervened, pushing the guy away and urging Aryati to hurry home. It turned out the sneaky follower was Yudo, who, in his usual sneaky way, pretended to be injured to gain Aryati's sympathy. After Alex had pushed him, Yudo ended up at Aryati's place, making a big show of how much he was hurting. Alex felt kind of bad and even offered to take Yudo to the hospital, thinking he might need some medical attention. But this freaked Yudo out, and he quickly decided to head home. After he was gone, Aryati let Alex have it, reminding him of the time they got caught up with the Red Axe gang because of him. Alex tried to explain that he didn't want any of this, and had been saying no to the gang's offers, but they just wouldn't leave him alone. Even with his explanation, Aryati was still pretty mad at Alex and kicked him out. But Alex didn't go far. He decided to keep watch outside Aryati's house, worried the gang might come back for them. In the middle of the night, Kayla got up to get a drink and noticed Alex outside, standing guard in the rain. Feeling bad for him, she made some hot tea and took it out to him. They chatted for a bit before Kayla went back inside to get some more sleep. The following day, Daylone and a few of his buddies were seen with a stash of drugs in a building. Suddenly, a masked person appeared and took their suitcase filled with drugs unexpectedly. Tauba and his gang immediately chased after the masked thief, leaving Daylon with only one of his guys. But then, another masked individual entered the scene, ready to take on Daylon. This new person easily defeated the one guy with Daylon while Tauba and his crew were still pursuing the first masked thief. After a wild chase, they cornered the first thief, but he managed to slip away, leaving behind the suitcase. At that moment, Tauba realized they had been tricked. Meanwhile, things were not looking good for Daylon. The second masked person was about to attack him, but Tauba and his gang arrived just in time to scare off the attacker. At that time, Daylon was very frustrated with Tauba for falling for such an obvious trick. On another note, Kayla was getting a ride to school from Yudo. During their journey, they ran into Alex. Soon after, Daylon approached Alex, trying to recruit him once again, mentioning that they would need his help against the Red Axe Gang. Daylon also revealed that the Black Dragon Gang had always supported Aryati. He dropped another surprise by mentioning that they had been paying Yudo to ensure Kayla's safety and get her to school securely. After sharing this, Daylon left. Back at the Black Dragon headquarters, Tauba was giving Ariel a hard time for a mistake he made at the entrance. Ariel had no idea about Daylon's close encounter with the masked person. When Daylon arrived, he scolded Tauba, and then announced that they would postpone their attack on the Red Axe Gang until they could get Alex to join them. Daylon believed Alex was crucial because he knew the real strength of the Red Axe Gang. A little later, Yudo invited Aryati and Kayla to have lunch together. 
As they were leaving, they bumped into Alex, who took Aryati aside for a quick conversation. He cautioned her to be cautious around Yudo, because he wasn't sure about Yudo's true intentions. Aryati didn't take it too seriously, and mentioned that she and Yudo weren't in a serious relationship. The three of them then went ahead to have lunch together. Later on, Alex tried to buy some new clothes for Kayla at the market. However, the prices were too high for his budget. Wanting to get something nice for Kayla, Alex decided to sell his Levis jacket at a nearby shop. After a bit of bargaining, he sold it for $4. Meanwhile, in another part of town, a couple of Taubo's friends were complaining about the Red Axe gang taking control of Fautier's territory. They were also upset that R. Real and Daylon had instructed them to leave the Red Axe gang alone. On top of that, they felt like Daylon trusted R. Real more than Tauba. Tauba overheard their conversation and was not pleased. In a hasty decision, he told them to gather the crew because he wanted to confront the Axe gang, even without Daylon's approval. Now there was a guy who usually bought things from Taubo's Black Dragon group. When he arrived this time, he was surprised to see members of the Red Axe gang instead. As he tried to leave, they informed him that he should start buying from the Red Axe gang now because they were the new leaders in town. Suddenly, Taubo and his gang burst in, starting a fight with them. A little later, Norman heard that Taubo had clashed with some of his Red Axe members. He was pretty angry and told his friend Bulldog to gather their crew because it was time for payback. Back at the Black Dragon hideout, Ariel was angrily talking to Daylon about Taubo's reckless actions against the Red Axe gang. Daylon was also very upset and told Ariel to bring Taubo to him right away. In the middle of this, Silas called Daylon, expressing the same concerns as Ariel. He reminded Daylon that the Black Dragon gang had broken their agreement. Meanwhile, Tauba and his group were celebrating their small victory against the Red Axe gang. However, their celebration was cut short when Norman and his crew arrived, ready for a rematch. Seeing the situation turning against them, Tauba decided to run away. Norman was determined not to let him escape and chased after him with some of his guys. Shortly after, Tauba tried to lose Norman and his crew by entering a narrow alley. However, they were right behind him. Just when things seemed bleak, Tauba bumped into Alex, who was busy with a delivery. Tauba pleaded for help, but Alex initially didn't want to get involved in more trouble. Still, when he saw Tauba in trouble, Alex felt sympathetic and decided to help by blocking the path to confuse Norman's gang. At the same time, Norman and his group were trying to figure out where Tauba had disappeared to. But Norman wasn't giving up. He split his team into smaller groups, and eventually, they found Tauba again. This time, Tauba had backup from Ariel and his crew. Ariel attempted to explain to Norman that the chaos wasn't caused by the Black Dragon Gang as a whole, but was just Tauba being impulsive. However, Norman was not in the mood to listen. He was prepared for a confrontation. But just as things were about to escalate, Silas called Norman. It turned out there was a new agreement with Daylon, and the fight was called off. Grumbling, Norman instructed his guys to pack up and leave. Once they were gone, Ariel warned Tauba that although he had evaded the Red Axe gang for now, dealing with Daylon would be a different challenge. And indeed, back at their headquarters, Daylon was extremely angry. He scolded Tauba and revealed the surprising news. He had made a deal with Silas. Now, Tauba would have to confront the Red Axe gang directly. Alex was on his way to Aryati's house when he encountered Yudo. Alex confronted him, revealing that he knew Yudo's real job, which was to monitor Aryati and Kayla for the Black Dragon gang. He told Yudo to stay away from Aryati because he didn't want any favors from the gang. Meanwhile, inside the house, Kayla seemed a bit antsy, like she was expecting someone. Aryati guessed it might be Yudo, but Kayla quickly shut that down, saying she wasn't into Yudo, because he wasn't genuine like Alex. Soon after, Alex popped in with some clothes and shoes for Kayla. He mentioned the shoes were from Yudo, who was moving out of town for work, and the clothes were a gift from him. Aryati was a bit suspicious and pulled Alex aside for a chat. She accused him of maybe doing something bad to Yudo, 
but Alex assured her he hadn't laid a finger on the guy. Their talk was interrupted when Alex noticed Tauba outside Aryati's place. Alex excused himself and told Tauba to beat it, but Tauba said he was just there to offer Alex a legit job. He wanted to repay Alex for helping him out before. Alex was skeptical at first, but Tauba convinced him he was on the up and up. Finally, Alex agreed to take the job. In the evening, the members of the Black Dragon and Red Axe gangs gathered in a secret location. There, Daylone and Silas had arranged a one-on-one -on -one fight between Tauba and Norman. Each of them had one hand tied with a rope, and there was a knife involved for them to use against each other. When the fight started, Tauba, who was smaller, was facing some difficulties. Norman even managed to grab the knife and tried to strike, but Tauba avoided it and gained the advantage. Just as things were getting intense, Daylon stopped the fight. He declared that nobody needed to lose their life that night because the winner was clear. He also mentioned that this showdown didn't change the way they would share the profits in Fotir's territory. It would still be a 50-50 split. Meanwhile, Alex checked out the job that Tauva had mentioned to him. It turned out to be at a courier office. Before heading out for the delivery, Alex asked about the contents of the package. The staff informed him that it was shoes. After they provided some instructions and handed him some paperwork, Alex set off. However, it turned out that the package actually contained a significant amount of drugs. Soon after, the staff at the courier place caught up with Tauba and asked him why he'd lied to Alex about the package. Tauba just shrugged it off, saying if Alex knew it was drugs, he'd never have taken the job. He told the staff to chill because Alex could handle it. Elsewhere, Norman was stewing over his recent loss. Just as he was mulling things over, two of his guys, Punjul and Bulldog, approached him. Punjul said he had a message from Silas for Norman, but turns out, when Norman turned around, Punjul took him out on orders from Silas. As Norman lay there, Punjul's phone buzzed. It was a call from some unknown guy, who claimed that the Black Dragon Gang was moving a huge drug shipment. At that time, Punjul was skeptical, thinking it might be a setup. But when the mystery caller gave specific details about the car and its license plate, Punjul decided to check with Rishol. After hearing Punjul out, Rishol relayed the info to Silas, who gave the green light to snatch the car. Punjul was feeling uncertain, worried that the tip might be a trap. However, Rishol encouraged him saying this was his opportunity to prove he could step into Norman's role. Rishol also emphasized to Punjul the importance of ensuring the safety of their crew during this assignment that no one should get hurt. Later on, Alex found himself on a quiet street, where he saw someone on the ground, appearing to have fallen badly. As he approached to offer help, something didn't seem right. And indeed, he was suddenly ambushed by Punjul. Just as he was holding his ground, Bulldog sneaked up from behind with his gun drawn. However, Alex's quick reflexes and skills turned the situation around, and Bulldog ended up getting shot with his own gun. Witnessing this, Punjul and his group got spooked and quickly fled from the scene. Shortly after, Silas scolded Daylung over the phone. He was furious that Alex had taken down one of his associates. Silas immediately assumed that Alex had joined the Black Dragon Gang and vowed to eliminate them. Shortly after, a mysterious guy, who had been shadowing Alex, finally revealed himself. It turned out to be Oriel. But the bigger surprise is Oriel was actually Balra, the younger brother of someone named Ail, who had passed away. Meanwhile, Alex was curious about a package he had, especially after the Red Axe Gang went after him because of it. When he opened it, at first, it just looked like an ordinary shoe. But when he looked closer, he found drugs inside. He was really mad because he realized that Tauba had tricked him. On the other hand, Punjul got to the main base and Rishol was not happy with him. Even though Punjul had recently gotten a promotion, replacing Norman, he didn't do a great job at protecting his team. Punjul mentioned that Alex was the one who harmed his men. This made Rieshol even more upset. He was disappointed to hear that Alex might be with the Black Dragon Gang again. Not wanting the Black Dragon Gang to become powerful, Rieshol told Punjul to get their team ready to fight back against them. 
The next day, Daylon was super frustrated with Tauba again. Because Tauba had the bright idea to make Alex their drug runner, and now the drugs hadn't reached where they were supposed to. This meant a big loss for them. Daylon got so emotional that he started thinking Tauba might be betraying their gang, the Black Dragon. Meanwhile, Alex was in a car with a package, but when he saw loads of police around, he freaked out because he had Bulldog's dead body and the drugs in the car. Alex remembered that he had promised Aryati he'd change and leave town. Not wanting any trouble with the police, he quickly wiped off his fingerprints from Bulldog's gun and tossed it in a trash bin. Meanwhile, somewhere else, Daylon was having a chat with Aureal, and he was really mad at Alex for causing so many problems for their gang. On the other hand, Aureal had a sneaky idea. He suggested that they should get rid of Alex. Daylon, all mixed up about the situation, told Aureal to set up a plan to do just that. Meanwhile, Aryati and Caleb were busy packing their stuff. Suddenly, there was this weird knock on their door. A bit later, Alex rushed over to see Aryati. He knocked on her door, but no one answered. He then found a note saying Aryati and Kayla had been taken. Turns out, some masked guys had kidnapped Aryati and Kayla. They were now stuck in some big empty place that looked like a warehouse. When Alex tried to find them, he bumped into Aureal. Aureal said he'd seen the girls get snatched by these masked folks. Alex thought maybe they were from this bad gang called the Black Dragon Gang. But Aureal said no. To show he was on Alex's side, Aureal said he'd help find the girls. But there was a catch. Aureal wanted Alex to take out this guy named Silas. Alex wasn't sure about this whole thing, but he felt stuck. He had to do something. Meanwhile, at the Black Dragon's place, Daylon was chatting with Taubla. Daylon told him to help Alex get ready cause he's got a job tonight, and that job was taking out Silas. There, Daylon made it clear that if Alex messed up, that it's on Tauba too. Tauba got on the phone right away, trying to figure out where Silas would be that night. Once he got that info, he set up a bunch of weapons and waited for Alex at their meetup spot. But when Alex showed up, he was super mad. He gave Tauba a good punch because he felt Tauba had played him earlier. Then, Alex started picking out the gear he needed. Tauba mentioned that Silas was going to a party at a club and later, he'd be at a hotel with his girlfriend. Then, Tauba told Alex that the hotel might be the best place to do the job. As Alex was about to head out, Tauba wanted to come along and help, but Daylon had made it clear that this mission was only for Alex. Then, at night, Alex reached Silas's hotel. Before making a move, he called Aureal to check if he had any news on Aryati. Meanwhile, at the warehouse, Aryati was attempting to unlock a door with a piece of wire, but she was having no luck. Out of nowhere, Aureal showed up, acting like a hero, and claimed that he was there to rescue Aryati and Kayla. While they were on their way to what Aureal referred to as a safe place, Alex phoned Aureal to check on the girls. Relieved to hear that they were safe, Alex hurried to the hotel, determined to take down Silas. However, when Alex sneaked into what he believed was Silas's room, he received a major surprise. The room was completely empty. He quickly realized that he had fallen into a trap. Before long, a group of Silas's henchmen ambushed him. Fortunately, Alex had some impressive fighting skills. He fought back and escaped, informing Aureal on the phone that the entire plan had gone awry. Aureal acted surprised on the phone, trying to deceive Aryati. But instead of taking Aryati and Kayla home, he brought them back to the same warehouse. It didn't take Aryati long to figure out that Aureal was simply using Alex, and they were back to where they started. Meanwhile, Reesehole missed his chance to grab Alex, so he quickly told Silas about it. Silas was super mad. He told Reesehole to round up his crew, the Red Axe Gang, and take on the Black Dragon Gang. In no time, the Red Axe Gang was all over the places where the Black Dragon Gang hung out. They were really mean and went all out against the Black Dragons. On the other hand, Taobo wasn't going to just stand by. He got his guys together for a showdown with Reachel's crew, but things didn't go well for Taobo and his team. Daylon was pretty ticked off with Taobo for the mess, 
Plus, Day Lone started thinking someone from the Black Dragons had spilled the beans about Alex's plan. He was sure there was a snitch in the gang. Ariel got super nervous about this and pointed the finger at Tauba, saying he was the one giving away their secrets. The two of them started arguing, but Daylon stepped in, breaking it up. He was said that if there's a traitor, they will find out. Before anything more could happen, Ariel suggested they should hit back at the Red Axe gang, but Daylon had other ideas. He told Tauba to focus on a new target, which was the Red Axe's drug stash at Pier 19. A bit later, Daylon told Tauba to get his crew together. Their mission was to set fire to the Pier 19 warehouse. At that time, Tauba and his gang got there pretty quickly. They poured some oil and took care of the guards outside. But just when they thought they were sneaky, boom. The lights turned on, and they were trapped. Tauba figured that fighting wasn't a good idea, so they just gave up. Meanwhile, Reeshol and Pun Jewel were having a party because they outsmarted the Black Dragon gang. Then, Aureel, the guy who'd been giving them tips, called Pun Jewel. Pun Jewel was super thankful because everything Aureel said turned out right. Pun Jewel wanted to give him a thank you gift, but Aureel said no. He just wanted to chat with Silas. But Pun Jewel decided to hand the gift over to Reeshol instead. Reeshol thought it would be nice to meet Aureel and personally give him a present since he'd helped them so much. So, they planned to meet up. At that time, Riesel told Silas about this meetup, but Silas was suspicious. He thought Aureel might be a double agent or something. He told Riesel if Aureel snitched on the Black Dragon gang, he might do the same to them. Silas also believed Aureel had some backup. So he warned Riesel to be extra careful. On the flip side, Alex called Aureel to update him on how he had managed to avoid the Red Axe gang. Aureel pretended to be concerned and advised Alex to keep a low profile. When Alex mentioned wanting to talk to Aryati and Kayla, Aureel quickly rejected the idea, saying it wasn't wise. Later, after ending the call, Aureel met up with Aryati and Kayla. He implied that Alex would soon experience a profound loss, similar to what Aureel had gone through when he lost his entire family. Meanwhile, things were looking quite dire for Tauba and his crew. They were all tied up, and it seemed like the Red Axe gang would soon finish them off. However, Fota, one of Tauba's associates, managed to sneak in a knife and began cutting the ropes. Then, when a guard wasn't paying attention, Tauba seized his gun and went into action hero mode, shooting his way to freedom. A massive gunfight erupted, but in the chaos, only Tauba and Fota managed to escape. They quickly fled and took shelter at the harbor. Meanwhile, Reeshol and his crew got to a spot to meet up with someone named Aureel. They waited for a bit, and then Aureel showed up with a mask on. When they were face to face, Aureel quickly removed his mask, revealing who he really was. Reeshol was super surprised to see it was Aureel and he asked him why he had turned against the Black Dragon Gang. Aureel then shared a heartbreaking story. The Black Dragon Gang had destroyed his family, leaving no one alive. Because of this, Aureel was on a mission to get rid of not just the Black Dragon Gang, but also other bad gangs, so no one else would suffer like he did. Instead of feeling bad, Reeshol just laughed and made fun of Aureel. Then, one of Reeshol's guys came running over with some news, they were under attack, and someone had taken out Silas. Before heading out, Aureel dropped another bombshell on Reeshol. He was the younger brother of Ale and a buddy of Jarrot from the Black Dragon Gang. Reeshol was stunned and wanted to know why Aureel had hurt Silas, since Silas wasn't really involved with Ale or Jarrot. However, Aureel didn't give an answer. He just lit a cigarette and walked off. But as Reeshol tried to go after him, bullets flew towards him and his team from far away. On the other hand, Tauba quickly got in touch with Daylon, letting him know their secret plan had been found out. Now, only Tauba and one other guy from their team were okay. Daylon said to hang tight at the border, and he'd send someone to help. Rishul, meanwhile, was still alive. Lucky for him, the bullet missed any vital spots. Looking around, he noticed his buddies weren't doing so great, he decided it was best to get out of there 
and get some medical help for his bullet wound. Elsewhere, Kayla was trying to figure out who her dad was and the real story behind Alex. Caria told her she was old enough to handle the truth. Soon after, Aryadi chimed in, dropping some clues about Kayla's dad being a super brave guy who's in a bit of a tight spot right now but is trying to do the right thing. Suddenly, it clicked for Kayla. Alex was her dad. She told her mom they needed to help Alex so they wouldn't be in the way. Then she made a loud noise, which freaked out the guard. When the guard came running, Aryati quickly knocked him out with a piece of wood. But just when they thought they were free, Ariel showed up, blocking their way. On the other hand, while Reese Hull was getting medical help, some of his crew came and told him Silas and the others were in trouble. The cops were all over Silas's house. One of them also mentioned seeing Alex at the market. There, Rachel quickly went to find Alex, but when he did, Alex started beating him up. Rachel quickly spilled the beans, saying Ariel was the real bad guy behind everything. He said Ariel was out for revenge because Ja Rot had killed Abel. This news shocked Alex big time. He tried to call Ariel to check if it was true, but Ariel didn't answer. Elsewhere, Taubot got picked up by Daylon's guys, but things went sideways when they took him to a remote spot and told him he was going to be taken care of. They thought Tauba had betrayed the Black Dragon gang. Just when it looked bad for Tauba, Fota swooped in and saved him. Fota believed there was a traitor in the gang, but didn't think it was Tauba. Thinking things through, Tauba realized Aurel was probably the backstabber, and even with Daylon wanting him gone, Tauba was still concerned about him. He and Fota decided to go to the gang's base to let Daylon know. But as they got close, Fota stopped Tauba. Ariel's crew was outside, and if they spotted Tauba, they'd tell Ariel, and Ariel would definitely want him dead. Initially, Tauba didn't pay much attention because he needed to check on Daylon. However, after listening to Fota's advice, he decided it was best to keep a low profile and wait for the situation to settle down. Meanwhile, Ryan, one of Daylon's associates, was on duty, guarding a section of Black Dragon territory. His job was to collect some money from an office, but when his fellow crew members returned, they discovered that Ryan had been killed. Soon after, Tauba came across a newspaper article reporting a significant operation against the Red Axe Gang. He became angry, realizing that Ariel was starting to reveal his true intentions. Back at the Black Dragon Gang's main headquarters, Daylon and Ariel had a conversation. Daylon reassured Ariel that he didn't need to worry about any traitors because he had dispatched individuals to handle Tauba. However, Daylon was puzzled, trying to figure out who was behind the recent attacks on their gang. No other rival gang had attempted to take over their territory before. Ariel remained silent because, well, he was the one orchestrating these attacks. Later on, Daylon received news that Ryan had been killed earlier that day by an unknown individual. Not wanting to meet the same fate as Ryan, Daylon instructed Ariel to increase their security measures. However, as Ariel was leaving their headquarters, some of his crew members mentioned that they had spotted Tauba and Fata still alive and well. To confirm this, Ariel dispatched his guys to locate them. Meanwhile, Fota shared how Ariel held significant influence within the Black Dragon Gang, making it difficult for them to inform Daylon about Ariel's true intentions. After an extensive search, one of Ariel's crew members spotted Tauba and reported it to Ariel. On the other hand, Tauba, upon learning about Ryan's death, strongly suspected that Ariel might be behind it. To stay ahead of the game, Tauba asked Futa to join him in meeting with Armin, another important figure in the gang. He believed that Armin could be Ariel's next target. At the same time, Alex was urging Riesel to search for Ariel, but Riesel was hesitant, believing that if Ariel found out he was still around, he'd be in big trouble. So instead, to gather some intel without telling Ariel, Alex suggested they should find Tauba. Long story short, Ariel beat everyone to Armin's house. After a short chat, he quickly had his crew take out Armin and his guys. To make extra sure they were gone for good, Ariel went ahead and shot each of them again. After this grim task, 
He called Day Loan to say he was a bit late in getting there, because Armin was hanging out with his kid, but now they were both gone. At that time, Day Loan was furious when he heard this. He thought maybe the Red Axe gang was behind the attack. Day Loan figured that no regular person would dare to do such a thing cause the risk was just too high. But if it wasn't the Red Axe gang, Day Loan thought there might still be some traitors in his own gang. A real, feeling the pressure, said he'd dig deeper to find out. Back at Armin's location, the area was filled with police officers. Tauba and Fota were also present but kept their distance. Tauba was quite frustrated that they hadn't arrived in time to assist Armin. However, he noticed that Armin and his group had been shot from a distance, so he began searching for and found some bullet casings. Afterward, Tauba handed these casings and his necklace to Fota with the intention of delivering them to Daylon as a warning about Aurel. However, things didn't go as they had planned. The moment Fota arrived at the Black Dragon Gang's headquarters, all Real's associates seized him. They brought him to the same place where Aryati and Kayla were being held. During that time, All Real's crew tried to pressure Fota into revealing Tauba's whereabouts, but Fota remained silent. This angered Aurel to the point where he decided to end his association with Fota. On the other hand, Alex and Rieshold managed to track down Tauba. At first, Tauba thought about bolting, thinking Alex had sided with the Red Axe gang. But once they grabbed him, Rieshold quickly made it clear they were on the same side. There, Alex reassured Tauba, saying they'd clue him in on Aurel's real plans. They decided to come up with a game plan that night, but Taubo wanted to wait for Fota to get more info. Meanwhile, Aurel played a sneaky trick on Daylon. He told him that Taubo was still around and showed him a necklace and some bullet casings, pretending he found them at the spot where Armin was killed. Daylon, falling for the ruse, was fuming and told Aurel to hunt down Taubo and finish him off. Back with Taubo, as time ticked away and Fota didn't show, Rieshal started thinking the worst that Aurel had gotten to him. With no time to waste, Alex asked Tauba if he knew where the Black Dragon Gang kept their secret stash of weapons. After a moment of thought, Tauba remembered the location. But Rieshal had another idea before heading there. He suggested they swing by the Red Axe Gang's weapons cache first because he had some extra firepower waiting for them. On the other hand, Aurel and Daylon got to Daylon's weapons warehouse ahead of everyone else. Daylon started noticing that Aurel's crew was giving him some weird looks, like they were plotting something against him. It hit Daylon that the real traitor in his gang was Aurel all along. In that place, Daylon wanted to understand why Aurel had turned against him. Aurel explained that he was seeking revenge, following a long-standing feud driven by his mother's wishes. Daylon reminded Aurel that he had chosen a life of crime, and with that choice came consequences, including the loss of family. This infuriated Aurel, and he was about to harm Daylon when suddenly, Alex, Rishol, and Tauba arrived and defeated Aurel's gang. During the chaos, Aurel managed to shoot Daylon twice before escaping, when he realized all his associates were defeated. Shortly after, they rushed Daylon to get medical help trying to save him. During this time, Tauwa was deeply affected by Daylon's condition, while Alex was worried about Aryati and Kayla's safety. On the other hand, Aurel, feeling cornered, decided to eliminate all of Daylon's crew and set fire to the drugs and important documents in the Black Dragon Gang's main base. Shortly after, Rieshol informed Tau, Bud that Aurel had set fire to the Black Dragon Gang's drug supply. When they arrived at the scene, Tauba found a message from Aurel, telling Alex to meet him at Pier 19. Without any delay, Alex rushed to that location. To make a long story short, they arrived at the spot and found Aryati and Kayla. Alex quickly signaled for them to get in the car. But as they were doing so, Aurel appeared and fired shots at Alex. Tauba, wanting to mediate, tried to persuade Aurel to calm down and end the chaos. However, Alex, concerned about Kayla's safety, instructed Tauba to get them away from there quickly. Aurel, wanting to inflict more suffering on Alex, took him to the pier for intense torture. 
In the car, Kayla couldn't stop crying, deeply worried about her dad. Tauba did his best to comfort her, believing that Alex would come out of it okay. Back at the pier, Alex, injured and bleeding, was being dragged by Goreel. Once they reached the end of the pier, Aureel started hurting Alex more and vented about how Alex and the Black Dragon Gang had caused his family's death. There, Alex admitted he'd done wrong in the past but was trying to change. Aureel, blinded by revenge, didn't care and thought Alex didn't deserve another shot at life. As Aureel kept beating him up, Alex thought about a promise he made to Aryati, which to leave the city with her and Kayla for a fresh start. This gave Alex a burst of energy to fight back, but he was weakened from his injuries. However, in the heat of the moment, Alex saw a chance and managed to throw a reel off balance with a powerful move. After Alex's powerful move, a reel was stunned and seemed a lot weaker. He probably didn't expect Alex to still have that much fight left in him, especially given Alex's injuries. Trying to get away, Aureel dashed off with Alex hot on his heels. Even though Aureel made another attempt to strike, he was pretty much drained, making it easy for Alex to sidestep and counterattack. In a final move, Alex pushed Aureel right into the ocean. With whatever energy he had left, Alex tried to leave the dock but soon became dizzy from blood loss. Then he sat down and then passed out. Fast forward a bit, and we see Reesol in action getting new folks on board. And turns out, he's now the big boss of the Red Axe Gang. Over with the Black Dragon Gang, Taubo's moved up the ranks too. He's now Daylon's right-hand man, and is also busy recruiting new members. Meanwhile, at Mangari train station, Aryati and Kayla were eagerly waiting for Alex. They were all set to head to Semarang. But time ticked on, and Alex was nowhere in sight, especially with the train almost ready to depart. So, Aryati told Kayla to board, reassuring her that Alex would catch up with them. But Aureel wasn't actually dead. He had just passed out the previous night and ended up under the pier bridge. And as for Alex, his fate was still up in the air. The film ends. The moral lesson from this film is when in doubt, don't trust anyone who throws you into the ocean cause it's a sure sign they're not your friend.